Okay, in this video, I want to look at a topic called first order linear differential equations. And we'll have a technique for solving these type of um, differential equations that maybe can be used whenever you can't uh, do the homogeneous or, or homogeneous uh, differential equations where you looked at the um, the function of x and y in front of the dx and the function of the x and y in front of the dy and they had to be of the same uh, degree. So this will be, an, and I'll show you maybe some problems here that don't fit um, the homogeneous differential equations approach. All right, anyways, so the standard form for this type of uh, differential equation. It's first order because there's the first derivative. So here's the first derivative right here, dy dx. So you have dy dx plus some function, continuous function of x here, y, equals some function of continuous function of x over here on the on the right side. All right. So it's linear because the y prime is linear and y is linear here. Okay? All right, so whenever we solve this type of differential equation, um, it's actually not too bad, but it's a little bit weird here uh, at the beginning, so bear with me here. Uh, first thing, or one of the things we're going to need is we're going to have to find something called the integrating factor, and it's not that hard to find, really. Uh, we'll call it I of X, and it's going to be E to the integral of P of X, and your P of X is the function of x that's right in front of the y whenever we have it in the standard form. All right, so i of x is going to be equal to e to the integral or e to the integral of p of x dx. So once once you find what p of x is, you integrate it, and then i of x is e to that power, and then you go right into your general solution right off the bat. So the general solution y is going to be equal to 1 over this integrating factor, this, this um, i of x, integral of q of x. What's q of x? q of x is what's on the right side of the standard form over here. It's not attached to y and it's not attached to uh, y prime or dy dx times the integrating factor again, dx. And then you might be saying, well, why do I have a 1 over i uh, of x and then an i of x here, and can they not cancel? Well, no, they can't cancel, because this 1 over i of x, this i of x itself is outside the integral. This one's inside the integral, so you can't move anything with x's, you know, from outside to inside or inside to outside. You can only move constants or coefficients, okay? All right, so now where does this come from? So to, to get your solution, you just integrate whatever this stuff is here and then multiply it by 1 over i of x. So where does this come from? Well, it's a little tricky, but let me show you. All right. So we take the standard form that we have here. And what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by i of x. So there's a term here. It gets multiplied by i of x. There's a term here. It gets multiplied by i of x. And on the right side, it gets multiplied by i of x. All right. Then I'm going to turn the i of x into its equivalent e to the integral of p of x dx. And I'm going to change dy dx into y prime. So everything else stays the same after you convert the i of x into this e to the integral of p of x dx. All right. Now, right side is the right side. What I'm going to claim here is that these two terms here, and try to follow it. If, if you can't follow completely, that's okay. Uh, I'm just kind of showing you where this weird um, general solution comes from. But I'm going to claim that these two terms here are the result of taking y times e to the integral of p of x dx, so the product of these two things, and then take the derivative. All right? So, see if you can follow. If I have two terms, or not two terms, um, 
two things multiplied together and I'm taking the derivative, I use the product rule, all right? So it would be first, which is y, times the derivative of e to the integral of p of x dx. So it's first times the derivative of e to a power is e to a power times the derivative of the power, if the power is sort of messed up, and this one is here. So it would be y times e to the integral of p of x dx times the derivative of the integral of p to the x dx. Well, the derivative of the integral is just p of x, all right? So you end up with y times e to the integral of p of x uh, dx times p of x. And that's what this whole term is right here. y times e to the integral of p of x dx times p of x. All right, so that's halfway through the product rule. First times derivative of the second. Plus the second, which is the integral, uh, or which is e to the integral of p of x dx, that's the second, e to the integral of p of x dx, times the derivative of the first, well, the derivative of y is y prime. That's what this term is here, all right? So these two terms are really y times e to the integral of p of x dx, and you take the derivative of all this, all right? So now we take what we have here, and let's integrate both sides with respect to x. So that's what we have. I'm just going to integrate both sides with respect to x. So here, if I'm integrating the derivative of all this, I just get all this, y e to the integral of p of x dx. And I'm going to leave the right side as it is, just the integral of all this stuff, dx. All right. Now, what if we turn e to the integral of p of x dx back into i of x? So I'm going to do it here. And I'm going to do it over here. That becomes i of x. And then when I solve for y, I would have y times i of x. Well, I would just multiply both sides by 1 over y of x, or 1 over i of x, I should say. So I get 1 over i of x. That's what this e to the integral of p of x dx would be if I sort of divided both sides or multiplied both sides by its reciprocal. That's this part here. And then this is the integral of q of x. I just turned e to the integral of p of x dx into i of x. And so there's your general solution. It's a little hard to, to follow. That's okay. Um, just accept that this is where it comes from. All right. So that's our general solution. All right. So let's go back. You're going to have your first order linear differential equation in the standard form. So if it's not quite in this form, put it in this form. There's your derivative with only a 1 in front of it. Um, there's your y term, so whatever's in front of it uh, is the p of x. And on the right side, the q of x there. You're going to form your i of x, your integrating factor, which is the integral, or which is e to the integral of p of x. There's the p of x dx, and then you go into your general solution that we just showed you in a kind of complicated way where it comes from. All right, so first problem. Um, we want to solve this differential equation here. Uh, dy dx plus 3x squared y equals 6x uh, squared. Now, it's already in the form that we want, the standard form. Here's the uh, dy dx, the p of x is right here, the 3x squared, it's what's in front of the y, and the q of x is over here, the 6x squared. Let's form the integrating factor. So i of x is equal to e to the integral of p of x dx. Well, p of x is 3x squared, so i of x is, the is e to the integral of 3x squared dx. We'll just integrate 3x squared dx. It's easy. It's x cubed. It's x 3x cubed over 3, or just x cubed. So now I know what i of x is. It's e to the x cubed. So now I take my general solution, and I plug in what i of x is. It goes right in here. So I get 1 over e to the x cubed. It goes into here. There's e to the x cubed. There's the q of x, which is 6x squared. 
And now all I have to do is integrate 6x squared e to the x cubed dx. That's a lot to say. All right. So when I look at this, uh, I'm thinking about u du substitution here. So if I have e to a messed up power, so my u would be x cubed, I'm going to need a du, which is going to be 3x squared dx. Well, I've got 6x squared dx. So what if I just take that 6 and make it 2 times 3? I can pull the 2 out front to get it out of the way, because it's just a number. I'll put the 3 with the x squared and tuck it over with the dx. So now I have the integral of e to the u du. Well, the integral of e to the u du is just e to the u. So there's my e to the x cubed plus some arbitrary constant, which I'm going to call c sub 1. Okay? So here's the 2 times this fraction here that I have. And now all I'm going to do to solve for y and put it in the nicer form is just distribute 2 over e to the x cubed through the parentheses. All right? So when I do, when I distribute it through, I'll get a 2. And then I'm going to get plus 2c sub 1 all over e to the x cubed. And what I might do with this, just to kind of clean it up a little bit, is bring the e to the x cubed up to the numerator. It'll be e to the negative x cubed. And then this 2c sub 1, 2 times a constant's just a constant. So maybe I'll just let that be just a regular c. So c is the same as 2c sub 1. All right? So that's how you might solve um, these type of problems here. Now I'm going to create a second part to the, this because there's one more problem we want to look at. And it's not a general solution, it's a particular solution. But I'm going to stop part one right now, and then I'll go into part two.